Okay, so the good thing about that bus ride is that we got all our jokes in this morning, right? Everyone's good. Um, so I'm going to just dive in. So um, my outline for uh, the week, I'm going to have four main topics. So today, I'm going to start with Boyenthal's suspension theorem. And this will be a very basic introduction. I would guess that many of you have seen this material, but I do know that there are people in the audience who haven't seen that material, and I'm in charge of giving the basic introduction to stable homotopy theory, so that's what I'm going to do. And um, for those of you who maybe have seen this material, give yourself a challenge. Try and write down all the details. Um, you know, that'll take you longer than the hour that I'm talking. So. Um, the Freudenthal suspension theorem is the first result in stable homotopy theory. It shows that stability exists. And um, probably this will extend into a little bit of Tuesday. I didn't do four equal parts, but so this is the longest part. Uh, and then after this topic, I'll be moving on to Brown representability. And then um, possibly depending on some of the student talks, I'll be talking about K-theory and cobordism. So the talks will also be covering those mater that material, so I may change what I do later. Um, so just a, a first word about Brown representability theorem. This, uh, that theorem shows that ger generalized cohomology theories are represented by spectra, and generalized cohomology theories and spectra are really the main objects of study in stable homotopy theory. So that will be where we really get going. Um, okay, so please ask questions. Um, I, I will be asking you questions, so it's only fair if you ask me questions. And um, I'll be labeling certain things as facts. So facts are things that you should translate into homework. So that means you get to fill in the details. And um, I will sometimes give you hints, and sometimes I won't. And I will expect that you might find some uh, other sources to help you along with those facts. OK, and of course, what I also mentioned that is that there are several people in this audience who have seen this material, um, not just the TAs. So those of you who are advanced students, please feel free to help out the other students and you know, ask around and you'll find someone. Um, OK, so today I'm going to start by introducing higher homotopy groups. And then I'm going to state the theorem. And then I'll probably start, at least, the sketch of the proof. OK. So before defining the higher homotopy groups, let me start with just a little bit of uh, motivation. So I am assuming that you've all seen homology, cohomology, and the fundamental group. So those are algebraic invariants that the first uses of them are to distinguish spaces. If two spaces, x and y, are, um, have non-isomorphic homology, non-isomorphic fundamental group, then they are not homotopy equivalent. Okay, so homology, cohomology, pi one are used to distinguish spaces. Okay, and um, I'm realizing that these are all going to be covered up, so let me start over again here. Um, okay, so pi. Pi n, these higher homotopy groups, are actually used to detect homotopy equivalences. Okay, so they're a more powerful invariant than homology and cohomology. So 
just to explain what I mean by that, by the detect homotopy equivalences, let me start by saying a map f from x to y, uh, which induces isomorphisms on these higher homotopy groups. For all n, is called a weak homotopy equivalence. Okay, and the great thing about weak homotopy equivalences is that between CW complexes, there are actually homotopy equivalences. So Whitehead's theorem says that if F is a weak homotopy equivalence, between connected CW complexes, then, in fact, F is a homotopy equivalence. Okay. So, I'm not going to prove this theorem because it's not central to the material we want to cover, um, but uh, it's the motivation in some ways for why we want to be able to calculate the higher homotopy groups. If you could always be able to calculate pi n of any space x for all n, then at least between CW complexes, you'd be able to tell whether a map was a homotopy equivalence. And in some way, that's you know, a goal of homotopy theory. Um, so, these are uh, powerful invariants, but as you might guess, because they're powerful, that means they're often hard to compute, right? So, there are very few spaces that we actually can compute all of the, homotopy, uh, all of the higher homotopy groups for. Um, so, we'll compute a few examples of homotopy groups, um, and there'll be at least a couple spaces where I tell you about all the homotopy. So, um, okay. Given that motivation, let's actually define the higher homotopy groups. So given a space X with base point X naught, then we define the nth homotopy group of X with base point X naught as the set of base point preserving homotopy classes of maps F from I n modulo boundary of I n to x modulo x naught. And in other notation, I'll, I'll write homotopy classes of maps with these square brackets. Okay, so the square brackets correspond to base point preserving homotopy classes of maps between the pairs. Okay, so here I 